Okay, this video is going over statistics for sixth grade, um, which will include all sorts of things, finding averages of data, interpreting box plots, and things like that, okay? So make sure you try it on your own first, and then watch the video to check your answers and for help. So question one, select all, remember all means more than one, usually, or at least one, um, one or more, usually, <laughs> um, all the true statements. So given a box plot, so remember box plot is when it's like this, it is always possible to calculate the mean of the data. The mean is when we add up all the values and divide it by how many numbers there are. When we have a box plot, we don't have no specific numbers. No specific numbers other than the biggest number and the smallest number. The median isn't even um, necessarily one of the data points because the median could be between two data points. So then you add them up and divide it by two. So it's always possible to calculate the mean? Absolutely not, okay? Because you need all the data points to calculate the mean. Given a box plot, it is always possible to calculate the median. Yes, the median is right here on a box plot. So this would be the median. It all, always the line inside the box is the median. Given a box plot, it is always possible to construct a corresponding dot plot. For a dot plot, remember a dot plot is when we have like, okay, this is 13 and we have this many dots, 14, we have two dots, data points. We need all of the specific data points. And just like how we can't calculate the mean with a box plot, we can't do a dot plot because we don't know all the specific values. We know, oh, there's 25% of our data between this value and this value, but we don't know all the swaps. So, not that one. Given a dot plot, so when we have all the dots, it is always possible to con construct a corresponding box plot. Yeah, so if we have a dot plot, we know all of the values, and then we could find the median, the quartile one, the quartile three, and the maximum and min minimum. So absolutely, yes. Given a histogram, so a histogram is when we have the bars that connect, okay? And we know like, oh, there's this many data points between 12 and 14, and there's this many data points between 14.1 and 16 or something like that. Um, it is always possible to construct a corresponding box plot. So we can't construct a box plot if we don't know all the values. Histograms, we only have general data points or general ranges, but we don't know how many of a specific value. So I would say no. So just those guys. Here's a dot plot of a data set. So we have a dot plot and we know all the specific data points. Which statement is true about the mean? So let's practice calculating the mean. The mean is adding up all the values and dividing it by how many dots there are. So right away there we have two, two, two. So we have two, 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 three, three, three. We have four, we have five, we have eight, we have nine. And we can add up all these values. and then we divide it by how many numbers there are. So how many dots there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're dividing it by 10, okay? So right away, I'm gonna just add these up. So two, four, six, three, six, nine, four, one, five, one, eight, and one, nine. So we can add up all those values. And usually on this type of question, you'll be able to use a calculator. So feel free to practice with a calculator. Um, you can also practice without a calculator, which is fine as well. So if I add it up, I get 41, and I have to divide it by 10 because there's 10 values, 10 dots. 41 divided by 10, remember when we divide by 10, we just move the decimal to the left one time. So it'd be 4.1. So the mean is 4.1. So the mean is less than four? Nope. The mean is greater than four? Yep. The mean is equal to four? Nope there's not enough information to determine the mean. So the only one that works is this. The mean is greater than four, because it's 4.1. Okay, question three. Ooh, this has lots of parts, so be ready for this. So, the beginning says, the air quality was tested in many office buildings um, in two cities. The results of the testing is shown in these box plots. So we have box box. A level of less than 50 parts per million is considered healthy. A level of 50 or more parts per million is considered unhealthy. 
So select all the statements that must be true. The lowest recorded measurement was in city Q. So city Q, the lowest is this part. So the lowest one is in city Q. City P's lowest is 10, city Q's lowest is five. So I'd say yes. All buildings tested in city P are in the healthy range. So to be in the healthy range, um, as to be 50 parts, a level of less than 50 parts to be healthy. So all buildings tested in city P are in the healthy range. Yep, so all in city P, all of them are less than 50. This would be the line for the healthy range below here. So I'd say yes, that one. The mean of city P is greater than the mean of city Q. So the mean, meaning the average of all of them, the mean of city P is greater than the mean of city Q. Even though we can't really calculate the exact mean, we know all of the data points are just between 10 and 40 for city P. And we have all these values that are in general greater. So I would say the mean of city P is greater. I want to pick that one, okay? Next one, the range of, for city Q is greater than the range of city P. So the range of city Q is the biggest minus the smallest. So the range would be 60, 60 minus five, which is 55, okay? For city P, the range, it looks like this is like 40, and this is 10, so it would be 40 minus 10, so the range for this one is 30. So the range is bigger for city Q, so city Q. And it says the range for city Q is greater than the range for city P, absolutely. Next one, the median for city P is greater than the median for city Q. So the median is the line inside the box. So this is the median for city P, which is about 30. And this is the median for city Q, which is about 25. So median for city P is bigger because 30 is bigger than 25. Um, for this one, we may, if it says the, hmm, yeah, we'll hold off on that one. Okay, question four. The box plot displays information about the number of text messages some students sent one day. So what is the median? So the median is always the number inside the box. This is the median. Okay, so the median is between 10 and 15. So if I was going to do this right. I think this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm guessing this is 14 text messages, okay? What is the interquartile range? So the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So Q3 is right here, and this is Q1. So Q3 is 20, so 20 minus Q1 is 10. So 20 minus 10 equals 10. So the interquartile range is 10. So make sure you can do that. If it just asks for the regular range, you take the biggest number minus the smallest number. Q3 is the outside of the box. So Q3 minus Q1. Question five. 10 children each played the same game. This list shows how many points each child scored. What is the median? So to find the median, we have to first order our numbers from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to order it from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to start with, there's two 120s. The next biggest is two 130s. Okay. And then we have a 140. And then we have a 150. We have two 160s. Um, we have a 170. And our biggest number is 190. And just count your numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 values. Let's make sure I wrote down 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I find my middle number. So my middle number, since it's 10, it should be between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. So this would be my middle number. Since it's between two numbers, we add those numbers up and divide by 2. Okay, just to see what number is right in between 140 and 150. Another thing, if you know exactly what number is between 140 and 150, 
you could just think about it, but one way to do it is add them up and divide by two because it splits it in half. So I know that would be 145. So my median is 145. What is the interquartile range? Yikes. Okay, so interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Q1. So if this is my median, I'm going to find the quartile 1 by finding the middle number of the first half of my data. So 1, 2. This is my Q1. The middle of my top half of my data, 1. Here's my Q3. So I have to take 160. Q3 is 160 minus Q1, which is 130. And 160 minus 130 is 30. So my interquartile range is 30, 30 points. So that's like the range of my quartile three and quartile one. Okay, question six. Jada asks some students at her school how many hours they spent watching television last week to the nearest hour. Here are a box plot and a histogram for the data she collected. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So question one, or this first part, about how many students did Jada ask? Um, about, so we know there are 40 students who answered between zero and five. There are 30 students who answered between five and 10. There are 20 students who answered between 10 and 15. Five students who answered 15 to 20, and let's call this three, and let's call this two. So I'm gonna add up those values. So 40, plus 30, plus 20, and five, plus five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I will all just add 10 there. So let's add her up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it should be around 100, 100 students. So I would say about 100 students. Okay. Is the mean or the median a more appropriate measure of center for this data set is the mean or the median. So I'm gonna, the mean is when we add up all the values and divide it by how many values there are. Um, the median is the middle number, okay? So I would say the median is more of an average because it looks like there's a big outlier at 26. There's a data point that, um, that is much bigger because so, there's a big range of data. So when the line is super long, that means there's an outlier usually, which would affect the mean. So the median would probably be a better measure of center. Okay. So I'm going to come down and then I'm going to select median. How can Jada use these data displays to find the exact median? Jada can use, so we know to find the exact median, we're going to use a box plot. Okay, because when we use a box plot, we know the median is this middle number. This is the median. So the value between four and six, which is five. So the median would be five, and I use a box plot to get that. I can't use a histogram because they don't have specific values. Okay, and then the last one, why can't Jada use these data displays to find the exact mean? Both box plots and histograms only show ranges. They only show ranges of data and not exact data points. They show ranges, they don't show specific values. Dot plots show specific values, but we could not use the histogram or the box plot to calculate the mean because we don't know all of the values because we just know the ranges of data. Okay, thanks for watching the video.